cause they never excite me Boxes, boxes, I cannot fit in the boxes Stop it, stop it, quitting was never an option Exhausted, exhausted, this passion is never exhausted And you cannot stop it, nah, you cannot stop it
Good morning out there to our hockey family. Welcome to the New Zealand Heritage Hockey Tournament 2024. The place where culture and pride hit the turf and some of the best players in the country have the chance to stand up and represent their heritage. We're coming to you live from the National Hockey Centre here in North Harbour, home of North Harbour Hockey Association and the New Zealand Black Six. I'm Brad Pittman and we'll be with you the entire Easter weekend here, bringing you all 16 games of this year's Heritage Hockey Tournament to see the teams get ready out on the pitch. It's uh, our second game of the day, first men's match for the tournament, and it's between the New Zealand Junior Māori taking on in the New Zealand Indian Sportsmen's of course in the men's section of the tournament. These are two sides who faced off in last year's tournament and are no stranger to each other or to this Heritage Hockey Tournament. New Zealand Indian Sports, of course, they'll be in their white strip. New Zealand Junior Māori in the black. Uh, they are two returning teams from last year's tournament. There we see the Māori boys just coming off the field. Black singlets, red socks. Our umpires for today's match, Jacob Camilleri and Josh Cumberoff. They'll be in the pink and blacks in the middle for today's game. And it's going to be an exciting one between the New Zealand Junior Māori and New Zealand Indian Sports. We see the captains come together there. Looks like it's uh, Devon and Bicker and Norpeta Hohepa. And of course, as we look at some of the uh, the history of this tournament, of course, birthed four years ago out of an, an opportunity to celebrate our multicultural background here in New Zealand and create pathways for New Zealand Māori, New Zealand India and New Zealand Pacifica communities. The tournament has since grown in, in size and popularity in, uh, in attendees and this year we welcome the inclusion of New Zealand Asians, the New Zealand Fijians and the return of the New Zealand Barbarians. So, um, exciting stuff. It's the first day of tournament here. We're up in North Harbour for the first time. Let's take a look at some of our team lists. Here we see the teams about to come out. Uh, just to make mention, a couple of players from that junior Māori side, uh, Te Oranga Hohepa, uh, solid midfielder. He'll link up well with his brother, Norpeta Hohepa. Another one I've mentioned, Keelan Stafford, uh, a defender from Waikato Maniopoto. Uh, he'll have a, a big job today. For the Indian side, uh, of course, there's a couple of, uh, of regulars that we see year in, year out for this NZI team. The Auckland Indians boys, Shea Iswa and Dylan Patel. Big deal, of course, in goal. Uh, they'll be joined across the park uh, by some more regulars and Sajan Patel, uh, Brett Menezes. But I'm also excited to see um, Shea uh, working with Prashant. Prashant, a, a tidy midfielder who had a strong NHC last year. Uh, and I'd be remiss to mention Amanjot Singh, the young midfielder from CD, uh, making his debut out here for the NZISA men. Uh, just a young player, he'll come off the bench today. A uh, ton of skill and attacking ability. Amanjot Singh, for those of you that tuned into last year's KBT, you'll know his exploits. As the teams get through their uh, handshakes to start this game. It's an overcast Easter Friday here in North Harbour on the North Shore of Auckland. It's our first game of the men's section of tournament. Second game for the day. In earlier games we saw the New Zealand Junior Māori women beat the New Zealand Indian Association women 2-1. And this is the replica game for the men's section. Just looking at some of those uh, Indian men's lineup there. I'm coached by Hitendra Patel. So we get a deep dive there into the Indian huddle. And there, of course, is our Māori side. Look there at the braided mullet now of TJ Hudanui. That thing's going to be in full force. Uh, a little bit later this afternoon, there's the last two players there for the Indian side. Uh, another one that's exciting, Connor Narasi, another CD boy out there for NZI. And Murph Hornsby, uh, a regular here in North Harbour at these turfs. 
We're underway here. It's the Māori team with first use of the ball for 17-minute quarters of action here at Heritage Hockey 2024. Part up a hawk working the right sideline. And around the back, Waka and Stafford. Through to Palmer there, who's starting at left half. It'll be Tekohu Palmer. And a little tangle up there. I think it's Sachin Chiba. No, it's uh, Sergeant Patel out there. There you go, overhead. Cut out well there by Tioranga. And now around the back for NZI. And that's uh, Shahil Lala at the back. Good to see him suiting up for the NZI team. Lala on the ball there. Of course, a uh, North Harbour Indian Sports Club men's player from KBT last year out here on the home pitch. And good steal there, Caleb Williamson looking for some support. There they've found it. The Hohepa brothers linking up in the middle of the field. Here's Norpeta still going, Norpeta. And cleaned up well enough there for NZI. Here's Palmer around the back through Stafford. They're repositioning this right side. A little bit untidy in the end there by Panapa Hawk. Lala again. Round. There you go. Oh, excellent receive. Shea Iswa. Iswa has Sajin Patel. Sajin. Back to Iswa. And on the foot there, those two are going to be excitement machines for this NZI team. It was a fantastic receive in the middle of the field by Shea Iswa there in the number eight. Check out this replay. We just miss it there. Uh, this pass through to Sargent. Back to Iswa, straight on the foot. Thank you very much for coming. The NZI boys starting hot here. And penalty corner opportunity here. Looks like Iswa set up at the second bracket. Prashant Patel on the first bracket. Sarge to pull it out. Prashant, upright hit, saved. Still there for NZI, just outside the circle. Sarge looking. And well defended all around there by the Māori team. For those that have tuned in in previous years of Heritage Hockey, we're probably used to seeing the drag flick exploits from the NZI team. Thinking of guys like Nita Sukka. Uh, obviously not out here this weekend. So some variation for the NZI bracket. And here comes Prashant taking it quickly. Too high up into the defenders there. So they'll take a bit of a breath, the Māori team. First bit of defence done for the Māori side. And here's some excitement. Tioranga Wairu Ahohepa gets it stolen by Sargent. And back again through Palmer. Again, they'll reset their shape. Roll forward, Keelan Stafford on the ball. I really like the distance between the two middle defenders at the moment for the Māori team. As long as they don't get too disconnected. Again, great receive. Man, this Indian side can attack with some pace. Iswa again. Shea Iswa has got the edge of the circle. Now show some skill. Shea Iswa taking on Tristan Waka. Oh, and it's right there. Oh, a couple of swings at it by the NZI boys. 
And the Maori team under the pump at the moment. Man, this, uh, this New Zealand Indian team are trying to start fast here today. You love to see it. One thing I've been really impressed by is two times now, uh, that ball into the midfield, a little post-up lead from a striker. It's been electric. And the Maldi side working down this right side. Now win the first one there. It's Panapa Hawk. He'll roll it back through. Keelan Stafford. Tristan Walker there. Of course, it's Miles Landon to start in goal for the Maldi team. And here come NZI up towards halfway. Cut out well there. Hohepa looking for his brother. Decides against it. He'll link up with Keelan Stafford. And there's the Hohepa connection. A couple of reverse stick passes. We'll bring in... Tikohu Palmer, who just ran out of space. And it's been a, a frantic start here for this first men's game. Great receive there going forward through. This Ranik Patel is subbed on here for NZI. He had a solid tournament uh, at KBT for, for Auckland Indian Sports, of course. In the overhead, looking for the back line. Going to let it play there. It's really good composure from both players there. And Sargent wound up for six runs. and he got four of them. And again, uh, the defence standing up to it for the New Zealand Māori team. It's a, uh, it's a solid outfit here for both sides. Really impressed with the sides they've brought to this year's Heritage Tournament. Here's Waka looking up the inside forward channel. Chiba rolls it forward there for Kalen Dial. Dial gets tangled up. And there is uh, Amanjot. Again, this, uh, this Indian side really throwing some shots at the Maldi team in this first quarter. Waka at the back for the Māori team. Pushing up a little bit now, the NZI boys. Up into that three-quarter. And there's the steal there through Sargent. Oh, he slid in, got the pass across the front of goal. Shea Iswa, I can't believe he's missed that one. You got the replay, this steal from Sergeant Patel. He's might be the world's fastest Indian. He's got a ton of pace, does Sarge playing at right midfield at the moment. Usually we see him up the front in these teams, but love his inclusion as a midfielder, just giving them a bit of juice. And speaking of juice, the shot there from Sachin Chiba had plenty of it, saved by Miles Landon in goal. And now they'll just try and pull some of those Māori defenders out of the circle. The slider can't get through Tyler Kennedy. And here's Solomon hiring a plank. Couldn't connect up there. Intercepted by NZI. Here they come. Up this right side of the field. Brett Menez is on the ball. Around the 
Round they go. That one a little bit too far ahead of Ranik Patel. And uh, Harrison Cochran on the ball here for the junior multi side. He rolls it back out to Waka. Now we've got to make a special mention to uh, Harry's sister Brody, who uh, was recently named in the Black Sticks side to take on Japan later this month. Uh, in fact, early next month here at North Harbour. She'll make her debut for the New Zealand Black Sticks. Uh, huge congratulations to her and the family. And I'm sure she'll be watching her younger brother Harry out here for the junior multi side. So shout out Brody. Uh, congratulations on your call up and your selection. Hope you go well uh, in early April. Back out here, the uh, NZI boys happy in this half-court press at the moment. Connor Narasi has come onto the field. Here's the activation through Chiba. But they left the midfield. And here's Amanjot. Amanjot Singh. Overhead on the run. Chiba pulls it in. Sachin Chiba. Over the back line it goes. It's off the, the, uh, the foot, so they'll go down for the foot instead of the long corner. Here is Chiba. Lovely transfer. Indians, 3D skill. Still there, turning through the legs. Still going. Oh, that would have been an early contender for goal of the tournament had that one come off for NZI. Again, happy in this half-court press or just in front of 65 paps for NZI. The activator is the middle. And that one unable to be pulled in up the front. Looks like Ben Cooper up there now for the New Zealand Junior Multi team in shot. Ranik Patel cut out well there by the Multi team. But they hand it straight back. The double turnover is killing them at the moment. And uh, while we're uh, watching this game, of course, uh, a special Easter shout out to a good friend of mine, Yogs, Yogesh Hari, who's uh, just sent me a message through with his, uh, his cupcakes for Easter. Glad to see you're uh, watching along and supporting the NZI boys, I'm sure, Yogs. Uh, your boys are looking good out here so far as we check out this replay. Long ball again, that post up lead has been impressive. There's Heron Marnie in there. And they just roll it onto the foot of Harrison Cochran. So second penalty corner. They went the straight uh, upright hit on the first one. Uh, I do believe Amanjot Singh has a bit of a drag flick in him on the first bracket, which potentially could be unleashed. Here it is. Wow, I'm not sure how that didn't go over the line. It was an initial glove save off the goalkeeper there. It's bounced around a couple of times. I'd love to have been a fly on the wall inside that goal. Wow, that's a bit of a scramble. I think an Indian player ended up in the goal. Uh, but the ball somehow is not. And uh, again, well defended by the Maldi team. Have a look at the replay from this penalty corner. So the save there... Excellent work. It was Norpeter Horhipper just fishing around in behind the goalkeeper. Had to be made because they'd pretty much run it in there, the Indian boys. And uh, they've dodged the bullet there, the Junior Māori team. Excellent defence. I'm sure that will uh, will please their coaching staff, David Hayes and, and uh, Harley Kupa down there for the Māori side. Harley, of course, hangs his hat on the defence, so I'm sure uh, he'll be pleased with that But David Hayes, not so much, but uh, good start from both sides here.
Working up the sideline come the Indian side into the circle. They'll take it back though. Sergeant Patel out here on the ball. He's dangerous. Ops to go out and around through Shahil Lala. Oh, good bit of pressure being put on there by TJ Hudanui. And the double recycle effective by New Zealand Indians. Working there, Devon and Bicker captaining the side this year. And good little bit of position here for the Indian side. Um, hats off to both teams in their patience here. And it looks like uh, Braithen Lemon has come onto the field for the Junior Māori side. One of the Wairiki, many Wairiki boys out here this weekend for the Junior Māoris. And long corner coming here for New Zealand Indians with uh, about 30 seconds left in this first quarter. Well defended there. Again, that'll be uh, part of the pats on the back if they can get through this first quarter. Again, solid in defence. This junior multi side. They'll count down the last few seconds. Tristan Walker just had a look at the clock before knocking it over the other side of the field. And that is the first quarter in the books for the first game of the men's section, second game of the day here at the New Zealand Heritage Hockey Tournament 2024. Coming to you live from the North Harbour Hockey Centre. Nil all, all locked up. Uh, of course, this is the men's matchup. And the first quarter under wraps. We see some of the crowd it's starting to grow here on Easter weekend. Awesome to see a fair few of the NZI ladies there supporting the men. And of course some of the families from both teams there. You can see some of the Māori supporters up a couple of rows. Let's have a look at some of these highlights. This one, Iswa and Patel working the penalty corner early doors. This one, the upright hit from Prashant Patel. Cleaned up well there by Miles Landon. Some, again, some skill shown there by Iswa. This one, scrambled eggs for breakfast on an Easter Friday. And Sarge again. He's been the instigator for a lot of their good attack. That one, millimetres. And if you want to see a goal that's uh, closer to being scored, there's a penalty corner coming up that'll... Uh, that'll show you that shot just pushed away there by Miles Landon. Look at this bit of skill here. Onto the foot again. In this penalty corner. <laughs> it's got to be one of the closest we've seen. Devon and Bicker couldn't believe it hadn't come into the goal with them. You see the teams come back out into the middle. And we're back underway here. Second quarter between New Zealand Junior Māori and New Zealand Indian Sports men. Nil all so far, but uh, got to say, the N NZI team had the run of that first quarter in attack. Looks like they're trying to start there again. And away come the Māori team. Cooper there, shoveling it, still going, Ben Cooper. Here's Hohepa Norpeta linking up with his brother, Te Oranga. He'll win the free hit there, just uh, up towards the 25-yard line.
Interestingly, this NZI team really happy to sit deep and try and target those wing halves. That's really solid running there, Josh Dreisingham. And they win it there through her and Marnie. Oh, very nearly again, Shea Iswa. These are names that you're going to hear a few times uh, on repeat when this NZI team get rolling. Shea Iswa, her and Marnie, Sergeant Patel. These are guys that like to go forward at a ton of pace. So um, this New Zealand junior multi side are really going to have to be switched on in their counter cover and their positioning when they turn the ball over uh, and limiting some of these chances for NZI. Cochrane under some pressure, under a lot of pressure. There is Iswa. Irmani. And they're going to have to take it back to a spot. Here come the NZI team. Reverse stick. Shot is saved. Miles Landon. Love that. Easy glove save in the end. And they'll win one on the 3D. Going here, NZI over the back line. Again, standing up to all of it at the moment, this Junior Maldi side. You have to be uh, some frustration starting to grow in the NZI camp with the amount of opportunity they've had so far. I'm sure Hatendra will be imploring them just to stick to it. It'll come. Stick to their processes. Everything's going good so far. And again, this that little post-up lead in the inside forward channel has caused uh, chaos so far. That's something they really need to tighten up on this junior multi side. You can see they've gone a little bit more into, uh, I guess, a bit of a midfield slide uh, block shape there in defence, just trying to clog up that lane, trying to be aware of it. And there's the mistake. That's what you want to see. So when they're sitting in that half-court block shape, they're protecting the middle. They're trying to cut out that midfield entry and force a turnover. Uh, and they've done it here. Come the junior multi team. And it goes, diving. Opportunity, Cooper, saved by Big Dill. I'm not sure he saw it off the first save. Kind of got up on him real quick. Uh, nobody wanted to commit the foul there. Big Dill cleaned it up in the end. It's been 20 minutes of, of getting cold there for, for Big Dill down this end. And uh, he'll tell you he's the, the Tohu Harris of this New Zealandian side. Absolute workhorse. Um, but a bit old and a bit broken. So good to have Big Dill in the goal. Of course, uh, a real leader in this NZI program. Uh, flew back in from India in time for a game at KBT this year. And back out here for NZI SA around the back. And of course, uh, New Zealand Heritage Hockey Tournament couldn't happen without uh, the support uh, from some of our fantastic sponsors. Special shout out, of course, to MTEL Intelligent Solutions, Keep a Life Insurance and Risk Management, Go Hockey at gohockey.co.nz, and One Foundation for bringing you this fantastic tournament, not only uh, for our players and family here. But for those watching online, whether it's on the website or on YouTube, a special thank you to our tournament sponsors for making sure we can bring this to you all free, live every single game for the weekend. 
And back out to it. The Indian side, happy to knock the ball around. New Zealand Maldi now sitting up in a three-quarter. And again, now here's the trigger. And it's a good breach for NZI. They need a link of pass, though. Just ran out of space on the back line. And here come the Maldi side out of their own end. NZI happy to sit back into their 65 again. And they've won it through Marnie. Here's Sergeant Patel. Amanjot Singh. Singh with the skills. Here he is, Amanjot Singh. Josh Turai Singham from the Wellington Indian Sports Club. It's a foot race here. TJ Hudanui. He probably had more time than he thought there, Hudanui. Of course, one of the uh, Tamaki Makoto boys out here. Lovely pass. Midfield transfer is there. 3D pass down into the circle. Go NZI. Here it is, Sergeant. It's a brave defence there by Panapa Hawk. Uh, appealing for a penalty corner, but nothing coming there. Heron Marnie up on the back line for NZI. Here's Sarge. Sarge looking, he's going to take on Panapa Hawk. He's past him. Sergeant. Oh. Far out. Sergeant's got some silky skills up there for NZI. He could thread a needle with a frayed knot, that boy. And again, in their 65, NZI happy to try and target these channels. A little untidy there, the defence. Excellent patience by Tristan Waka. Here they come, opportunity for the Maldi team. Turned away though, and on the counter come the Indians. Sergeant Patel, he's leaving sticks behind. And an agricultural tackle outside the circle there will bring the first penalty corner of the second quarter. And it's the way of the New Zealand Indians. Check the replay out on this one. Sergeant causing an absolute mess. Allowed to play on here. But this tackle, yeah, one stick, two legs, none of the ball. And it's a penalty corner here for NZI. Both teams just trying to get organised in their... Uh, Respective. Single bracket here, Amanjot. He's got a flick. It's come off one of the runners, the signal. Second penalty corner. We just saw uh, the man himself, Mr. Go Hockey, Brent Edwards, uh, arrive on site. Good to have your support over the tournament this weekend. And his, uh, his trailer will be around for those that are in and around the area. Come and get a good deal. Penalty corner action. Amanjot Singh. Great save. Miles Landon. And there's a counter opportunity here for the multi team. Williamson, great turn. His numbers. And a full field sprint there. Brett Menezes gets back on his bike. He's sporting the headband. I'm not sure I'm a fan. But the effort, incredible. A free hit here just outside the circle for Hohepa. Harrison Cochrane can't get through. 
And it falls for the Maldi side just in front of halfway through Keelan Stafford. And Tristan Walker. Stafford trying to take them on. He's kept it in really well there. Yash Kushal. One of the new players in the team for NZI this year. And right back out to their own line is Shahil Lala. Ranik Patel. He's kept it somehow. And for all our Caleb Williamson fans uh, on the card counter, it's his first one for the weekend. He uh, plays with his heart on his sleeve, Caleb Williamson, and uh, gets into everything. So sometimes that's uh, what happens. Bit of attack here, bit of a tumble. And they're going to say penalty corner down the far end. Try and have a look at it on the replay here. This be a good angle for it. Shea Yeah, just on the uh, left foot there of Panapa Hawk. Excellent call from the ref. Didn't doubt him for a second. He's a fair bit closer to the action than we are, of course, and uh, got it on the money that time. Shout out, of course, to our refs, Jacob Camilleri and Josh Kumbaroff. Here we go, penalty corner, four minutes left to play in the second quarter. I've gone back to a second bracket. The upright hit with a little bit of a lean back. It was Prashant Patel again who took their first penalty corner. And didn't get all of that one, unfortunately, for NZI, but they're still on attack here and looking dangerous up that right baseline. That's two or three attacks in a row now that have been solid for them up at that right T-bar. Great pass in from Ranik, and they've recycled. Prashant with Devin and Bicca. Panapa Hawk cleans up, and he's happy just to see it down the other end. Take a couple of deep breaths for the boys in black. And Big Dill goes out to the corner. And back to this half court here for the Māori team. Again, really wary of those inside forward channels. There you can see one from Durai Singham. They go to him. Yeah, so that's the uh, that's the little pass in there that they've been exploiting this uh, Indian men's side. So something perhaps for the uh, Maldi team to look at at halftime. Cochrane inside turn beats Patel, beats another one, links up. Hohepa still going, 3D opportunity rolls once, and the penalty corner coming. Wow, we. Of course, one of the uh, many products of Rua Mata out here for the junior Māori side. Look at this. Skill in, out. Didn't rush it. Found the shot up off the stick there of Ranik Patel. And penalty corner coming here for the Māori side. Looks like they've got two brackets as well. Caleb Williamson on the first. He's got a bit of a flick in him. Norpeta Horhipper on the second. There is Williamson. It beats the left pad. It beats the stick. It beats them all. Caleb Williamson, fresh off his two-minute break from a card, goes on and adds the extra with the goals from the penalty corner. Caleb Williamson. Have a look at this. First bracket goes right. Not an easy flick. And just spots the gap between post uh, goalkeeper and lineman. 
There it is. Caleb Williamson separates the teams for the first time. 1-0 here in the last minute of the second quarter. Last 30 seconds. They'll have a long corner. They might have one more go at it. And lovely transfer up to the back line. Just couldn't keep it under control. Brett Menez is. And they'll count down the last few seconds and miraculously, perhaps if you've been watching this game, the New Zealand Junior Maldi side find themselves up 1-0 over NZISA in a, a game that's been 90% the Indians' way. Uh, all it took was a bit of brilliance from Te Oranga Wairua Hohepa earning the penalty corner, executed and put away by Caleb Williamson in the end there. The Maldi team up 1-0 here in our first men's match of the tournament. As we see the two teams we see the two teams going in there. We'll go to a short ad break and we'll be back after this. Welcome back here to the National Hockey Centre. We're out here at North Harbour. We see a bit of half-time warm-up here. Uh, pretty good uh, warm-up partner there in Harley Cooper, warming up Solomon Kai here. Uh, I'm joined in commentary by, uh, I mentioned it earlier, uh, the man from Go Hockey, Brent Edwards. Eddie, um, so cool to have you down here, not only as a supporter and as a watcher, um, but as a sponsor and supporter of the event. So... Um, just talk to us a little bit about um, the relationship between Go Hockey and, and the Heritage Hockey Tournament this year. Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks, mate. Um, thanks for the welcome. Excited to be here. Uh, would have been nice to be here with the trailer, but we had some mechanical issues, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, no, um, we've been working with Scott for a little while now, and we attended one of the tournaments a couple of years ago in Papatoi, mm -hmm. uh, and we've been keen to be involved again and got the opportunity, so grabbed it. We love uh, our business is kind of built on events. Um, we've been attending events since we started about 12 years ago. So yeah, anything, you know, we're all about cool content and, and players getting these opportunities. So if we can be part of it, then we're, we're into it. Yeah, epic, epic. And you, you said a little bit of a, a hitch with the trailer on its way yeah. up from, from the bay, but uh, you've got a shop just around the corner here that everybody can get to. Yeah, absolutely. We've got our flagship Albany store just literally a kilometre around the corner at 40G Williamson, uh, William Pickering. Um, and they'll have massive heritage tournament deals going tomorrow, Saturday. Uh, obviously, we can't open today, being Easter Friday, but um, it will be open tomorrow with a whole lot of tournament specials, heaps of stock in there, lots of new stuff. Um, and, yeah, unfortunately, our trailer... Um, who was named um, by someone uh, within the Māori community as well as Trailer Swift, but 
Yeah, we had some serious brake issues and uh, weren't allowed to drive it up from Tauranga. So hoping to get it fixed in time for the Black Sticks Women's Test in a couple of weeks. Yeah, of course, of course. And that wouldn't be like you, Eddie, all gas, no brakes. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, harsh but fair. <laughs> no, awesome. Well, like I said, uh, cool to have you here as we look at some of the highlights from this first quarter here. Uh, or first half, I've got to say, it was all the NZI team, and man, they'll be feeling pretty gutted to be down one at halftime. I was going to say, the highlights will basically show uh, the Indian team on attack pretty much, won't it? Yep. Um, yeah, they couldn't buy a goal in that first half, certainly created a heap. Yep. Um, and some of their young guys, especially Armand Jot, who you'll see having a flick here now, yep. um, young guy who's going to go places. Um, yeah, look, the Indians uh, the team were looking really good, um, but uh, credit to the Māori 21s who just hung in there and hung in there and got that one opportunity. But, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, and sometimes that's all it takes. You know, hockey's such a game of, of inches and millimetres where you can batter away at a door so long. And I, I did make mention about five minutes to go in that quarter that they probably felt a little bit frustrated. They just couldn't get their way through. And then, as you mentioned, they go one down the other end, and it's a bit of skill that set up a penalty corner, so... Yeah, well, the, que the, uh, the question for the co uh, coach, of course, is to make sure they don't panic, because yeah. uh, they certainly dominated, so as long as uh, they get uh, the front third sorted, then they'll be OK. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And again, fast start here for the Indian boys. It's Shea Iswa down on the back line. Trying to find the penalty corner. It will come there, I think a little foot there from the Māori defender. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the message was for the Māori team at halftime because, of course, they'll be would have been unexpected to be one up. So, and they are a young side. So, how do you teach them to keep going or defend? Or um, so, yeah, a bit of a challenge for them now. Yeah, that's it. And sometimes, you know, you build into a game and you can take a lot out of repeat defences, especially when you turn them away for 35 minutes. Uh, there against this Indian side who are pushing hard. Uh, they'll have to step up here though because. This Indian penalty corner looks like Prashant Patel on the first bracket. And Sargent on the second. Here is Sarge. Oh, Norpeter again. He was the one that cleaned the one up a little earlier. Sturai Singham across it goes. And that one is in. Hiran Mani on the spot. Yeah, they did well there to just keep focused after that little slide left that they tried to execute that mm. was well defended initially. But they keep the pressure on the Indian team and got the result. Yeah, as we check out the replay here, this is it. Josh Turosingham just chasing it down here. Across it goes, and Hiran Mani doesn't miss those. It's one of the challenges, eh, when you're defending corners. It's uh, one thing to defend the first shot, but then you've got to defend the second. Yeah, it's almost, uh, especially when you make a pretty good save off a deflection like that, you can be all high fives and, and uh, back pats, but you got to make sure you get rid of it. And speaking of, here come the Indian side again. Cross it goes. It's got to be there. They'll get another penalty corner. It was Devon and Bicker down getting, that left side. Get the impression this Indian team were giving it maybe a little bit of a ruck up, perhaps. Yeah, and what will be really interesting now to see is, um, like you mentioned, what is this junior multi side made of? What yep. ticket do they have? They did manage to uh, turn things away for the first half, but... And they're a really young team too. There's quite a few boys that are straight out of under 16s. Yep. So a huge uh, opportunity for them, but also a lot of pressure. And same setup here for the Indians. Prashant, Sargent goes to Sarge. They went the same move. Didn't quite pick up the stick there of her and Marnie. Looked like a nice save there by the keeper. Yeah, Solomon Kaihe in goal there. Part of the uh, New Zealand Fives team that went across to Oman. A little earlier in the year. And again, it's still panic stations for the Maldi team. Heron Marnie in the same spot, but from the other side. Yeah, there's an air of inevitability about this, isn't there? But uh, we talk about it a bit. Can the young Maldi team hang in here? Uh, they need to get a bit of territory, really, or just possession to start and then build a bit of territory and get the ball up the other end. They're really under the pump at the moment. Yeah, yeah. And Hiramani's gone two from two on the spot for the Indian boys. Early doors in this third quarter. I said he doesn't miss them. <laughs> nah, that's, that's really good execution, that. Yeah, that one on the reverse stick as well. Um, on a bouncing ball, he's put it in the net. Here's 
This is what you want to see from the, the Maldi side. Just win their free hits, build some possession, get some layer happening. Slowly build some territory. Well, oh, that's going to fall there. Brayton Lemon, open circle. He's turned once and he's put it away. <laughs> how good is that? Wow, wee, how is that? Well, speaking about young under 16 boys that are just coming out, I yep. mean, how's that for composure right in front of the goal? And a beautiful <laughs> lead to pick it up. Yep, absolutely. Probably wasn't meant for him, the initial pass. It was a little trapdoor in the, the midfield there, but. Hey, you're ready for everything as a striker, and look at that. Look at that. That's Great composure by yep. the young fella. Absolutely. You'd often see him roll onto the reverse and wind up for all his might to yeah, yeah. whack it straight into the pads, but uh, no, really good execution from young Brace and Lemon. Yeah, good on him. 2-2, two -two. who would have thought? <laughs> yeah. And we're, uh, we could have ourselves 35 minutes of madness here. Here come the Indians. Marnie. Oh, put the knockers on him. He does miss yeah. one. <laughs> this is brilliant. And they'll come back perhaps for an earlier one. Ah, oh, yep, just outside the circle there, Sachin Chiba. And for those that were tuning along earlier, the brother of uh, Rashika Chiba from the Indian women's side. Part of the North Harbour uh, Indian Sports Club who um, I think uh, we're going for promotion at KBT this year. Hosting, of course, later in June. Yeah, that's another good weekend, that tournament. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now go back. Here's Sarge. A little bit of ping pong in there for uh, the second. Here comes Norpeta Hohepa. You mentioned age. He's probably one of the uh, the oldest and, and the leaders in the team out there, Norpeta. Yes, yeah. What would he be, 20 now? Probably yeah, 19, 20, yep. Yeah. Playing for some of all hockey club these yep. days. And here comes NZI through her and Marnie's weaving. Sachin Chiba unable to pull that one in. They um, they really go with pace, Eddie, on that midfield uh, turnover. Yeah, nice. And they're quick. They just win the ball and go. Yep. And that was nice vision too. Eyes up when he was carrying the ball forward, looking for a nice killer pass. Here is Norpeta Hohepa and it's Keelan Stafford out on the ball. Bit of one-up pressure here from Chiba. Yeah, the call's gone out to put pressure on. Yeah. Yeah, so they're primarily playing with the back three at the moment, this uh, junior Maldi side. So, Which is good to see. They haven't yep. become conservative. Yeah, but if you can get that one-on-one -on -one contest there from yeah, that trigger striker, yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's all Young on. Young and vulnerable. <laughs> and on come the troops for the Indian side. A couple of the CD boys. Oh, and there's some pressure the other end. <laughs> TJ Hudanui putting some on. And they've worked out well here. The Indian side is uh, Young Ranik Patel. And cut out. All red. A little bit of back and forth to burn the lungs on an Easter Friday. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a great catch there. <laughs> Sergeant hasn't finished cricket season just yet. Here's Chiba. Chiba. Sitting there. He's got to it again, Chiba. Man, everything's just at 100 miles an hour. Sarge here, working. Amanjot, one of those young players you talked about from uh, Central Districts Indian Sports Club. Yeah, what a super talent, yep. mate. He is a brilliant young player. Yeah, we got our first real good look at him at, at KBT last year in Wellington um, in a CD side that won the second division and will be heading up to the top division this year. Um, he and Conan Arasid, number 12 out there, uh, full of talent, but Amanjot, I think only 15, 16. Yeah, mate. He uh, first we came across him last year with our hockey experience. Mm -hmm. uh, he trialled for our Thunder Under 16 regional side. Uh, we're just blown away. Just mm. a super, super talent and a great kid. Yep. Um, hasn't got a big head at all. Very humble. Works really hard. Uh, be great to see where he goes with his hockey. Yeah, absolutely. And you make mention of the the hockey experience, Eddie. Uh, um, you know, something you've been working on. 
probably in that sort of under 16 space to primarily to start with, but some pretty exciting opportunities you're lining up for the under 20s uh, age as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We um, started out with an under 14 type experience mm -hmm. and that branched out into under 16s with the Super Challenge. Uh, and then we saw an opportunity for 21s, Canterbury putting on a tournament over Matariki mm -hmm. weekend down in Christchurch, uh, but not a lot of northern associations entering uh, and a heap of players keen to go. So yep. yeah, we thought we'd step up with the hockey experience and uh, we've had huge interest. So mm -hmm. looking to confirm those teams uh, in the next few days actually. Yeah. Um, and then do a little bit of prep and uh, get down there to Christchurch in late June when it'll be nice and warm, no doubt. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, play against Otago and South Canterbury and Canterbury and Wellington. Yep. Um, lots of players in that age group just looking for good content, mate. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, um, you know, it's got to be said, uh, I won't slight anybody in particular uh, on the air, but for you guys to step up and, and fill a void realistically, um, there's a huge void there. And, I'm sure you probably have enough for the three teams if, if that was the opportunity, but um, you know, such a cool way for um, the players in that age group to keep playing good hockey. Yeah, it's a pretty important age group, 18, 19, 20, and even into 21 and 22, right? Yeah. That, that they're the players that are still potentially chasing the dream. Uh, they need good content, and no 21s tournament is a massive hole. Oh. Uh, we were all lucky enough to have it in our day uh, when there were multiple divisions. Mm. Um, so, yep, there's still interest out there, still plenty of talented players that you need to keep interested. Uh, you need to keep motivated and you need to give them events that they can go to uh, to get better. So, yeah, we thought we'd step in there. Yeah, and I, I think it's pretty obvious. We've just seen the Australian Under-21 Championship wrap up only in the last week or so. Uh, and the number of guys and girls that are, that are pathwaying through to uh, Kookaburras and, and the um, international programs, uh, yeah, it's... Um, yeah. yeah, look, there just has to be a program in that yeah. age group. There just has to be. Uh, we can't rock up to World Cups with no... Uh, uh, with high expectations when we don't really have anything in yeah. that um, age group. Uh, I, I really feel for the players in that age group, actually. It's not a, a cheap age group to be in. Mm. Um, but, yeah, we've just got to create good content. And, like I said, we've had huge interest... Uh, from across the northern region. Yeah. Uh, well, we uh, we can't wait to follow along with how that one rolls out. And look, we, we did a tournament in Christchurch in July only a couple of years ago and pack your warms. That's all I've got to say. Yeah, I'm kind of built for it, to be <laughs> honest. But some of our athletes might not be. Um, yeah, some of these northern uh, boys and girls might not be prepared for it. So we'll make sure they take uh, a few layers. Yeah. No, awesome. Now awesome. looking forward to it though. I yep. reckon we'll end up with some really competitive sides. Yep. Uh, there's obviously plenty of talent in Canterbury now. Yep. Uh, with the university down there. Um, so yeah, no, looking forward to um, some really highly competitive games of good quality. Now we'll be following along, of course, with interest. And here come the Indian side up on attack, right baseline. Iswa. Oh, that's oh, oh, that's. That's second to none. That is top shelf stuff from Shayiswa. Just good composure, eh? Yep, yep balance. Probably could have taken a shot a few times, but just waited. Yep, got to a good spot. It was right on the baseline as we see the entry here on the replay. Real easy for people to get to this spot and just kind of throw it away. Turn both ways. Saw the goalkeeper was on the ground. and one of those ones where you're standing there going, pass it, pass it, pass it, pa oh, great shot, Yeah, mate. yeah. Oh, cool. High five. Yeah. We'll get back to halfway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's, um, that's real special, that from Iswa. Oh, sorry. These showers. Sorry. Yeah, heavy. it's, it's, uh, it's been an up and down on the weather front. We were sweating in the first half this morning and then the, the drizzle came in and uh, it's all all elements here. What else would we expect Easter weekend? We couldn't have four days off with sun, Eddie. It's no, New Zealand. No, that's <laughs> true. And it's Auckland. Yeah. Yeah, and now uh, that lead restored now for the New Zealand Indian sports. It's still a close scoreline. Yep. 3 2. Anything could happen here. Yeah, and as we've already seen, against the run. The Māori boys uh, scored, then two home for the Indians. And just yeah. when you thought their heart might have been broken, they throw one back in. And yeah, we do know the Māori boys do not need a lot of opportunities. No. Nah. So they've got to hang in there here. Now, this three minutes could be huge. 
as we lead into the end of this third quarter here just to see if any team does really get either something to take into the break or find something out that they can really work on for this fourth quarter. Yeah, a goal for the Indians boys here would be quite yep. telling actually. Here's that baseline entry again. Oh, that's battle stations at the back there for... Breathe a sigh of relief. Oh, Josh man. Cumber ref, ref, umpiring down there, nice and calm and composed. Yeah. Nothing rattles him. Yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> there was some athletic stuff happening in front of goal. Even Solomon Kai, I think he was doing the salmon at one point. <laughs> uh, and the rain's starting to come in a little heavier now. Yeah. You see it on the screens. Norpeta Hohepa there, just hopping to go out the back. Not quite sure why the Indian boys are hanging off a little bit. I'd be going at them at the moment. Yeah, like I said, that this three minutes, two minutes now, if you can break them here, you could go a long, long way to making sure there's Amanjot's skill. Whoop. And the ball across comes up off the stick. Yeah, that's unfortunate, but it's the right call. Yep. Yeah, it was pretty um, pretty slick skill from Amanjot. Just turned a couple of defenders inside out. He does that stuff for breakfast. But like you said, Eddie, not the sort of player that then goes and tries to take three more players on, which no, we often see. He's actually got beautiful vision as yep. well for a young guy. Um, I'm pretty sure he's still only year 11. Yeah, right. Uh, yep. At school. Uh, just superb skills. Great composure for a young guy. We'll see. Big opportunity here inside the last 90 seconds for the Indian side. Good save from Kai here, but it's still here. Oh, that's excellent. Oh, there we go. There he is. That one's going to go down to Amanjot Singh. But I do want to highlight the pass that got him open because, again, this Indian side's composure to follow up penalty corner with good quality possession. That's excellent there from the Indian side. And yeah, second phase play on yep. PCs has been in the Indian team's advantage here. The Māori boys need to be able to uh, save the first shot and then clear the ball. Yeah, yeah, they've been guilty of allowing two shots, three shots sometimes, extra yep. efforts. Yep, just struggling to win possession again, yep. eh? But again, the composure of the young fella there to keep the ball on his stick, get nice and low, flick one into the corner. Yep, rather than wind up. Yep. Yeah, wind up, have it stolen, duff the ball. <laughs> yep. <laughs> We've seen it all. We've done it all. <laughs> Absolutely. Here come the multi team. Can they answer back in the last five seconds? Probably not now. Devon and Bicker will run the clock down. That's the goal they needed. Yeah, it is. That that's uh, they're going to be pretty hard to to run down now. This uh, Indian men's side. Not that it can't be done. There's still 17 minutes for the Maldi boys, but um, that was huge for NZI. Yeah, that's massive. Yeah, Maldi boys wanted needed to score there rather than the Indian boys from that perspective. Yep. But yeah, uh, big last quarter for the Maldi boys. As you see the teams coming back in together, that'll be much uh, more pleasing to Hitendra Patel. Like you said, I think they probably would have got a bit of a spray at halftime. Mostly around their execution. Yep. Uh, execution in front of goal, execution in the attacking third, because, man, they had bucket loads of it. Yep. Um, just un unable to put things away, but that, that third quarter, uh, much better. Much well, especially better. after the Maldi boys scored. Yep. Um, so they, took, they could handle that and just still got on with the task. You have a look at some of those highlights. That's the reverse stick from her and Marnie. From out in front. That's a lovely ball. There it is. Wraith and Lemon with a little turn and through the five hole of Big Dill Patel. And that was the one where the Māori boys needed to score again. Yep. Yep. Then you see some of this skill. Inside, outside. Over it goes. Beautiful. Through the legs there of Tristan Walker. Again, they had uh, a lot of opportunity up that right sideline. That's where they've been really dangerous, even in this follow-up from penalty corner. You'll see here it comes out to the right. And just that extra step on it, Prashant yeah. Patel drew the goalkeeper out. Yeah, Little dish pass. Ball, yeah. yep. 
And like we said, well executed by the young fella. Yeah, teams charging back on here for the final 17 minutes. And the big question here is, can the Māori boys run NZI down 4-2 the lead? Four goals scored in that quarter for NZI. After the Maldives took a one-goal lead, here comes the Indians. Here is Iswa. Iswa weaving, working. And long corner coming here for the Indian side. Yeah, they are around the back here through Shahil Lala. Ranik Patel. Patel has Sergeant. Sergeant. It's got to get through Tioranga. Great defense there from Tioranga Hohepa. Another long corner. Happy just to keep some possession here for a moment. NZI cut out though over the sideline by Caleb Williamson. Ranik Patel. It's a lovely turn. That's very nearly another one there for NZI. Sideline hit for Devon and Bicker. Bicker, he's got the circle entry. Fortunately, lost his balance, and then a pretty agricultural tackle there will give the defensive free hit for the Māori team. 15 minutes left on the clock. 4-2 the lead for NZI. This multi team just needs some possession. They just need a couple of free hits and the ability to move their way forward. That's not going to do it. Good skill showing there. Kylan Dale. He'll step off it. Sergeant Patel on the ball there. Of course from Wellington Indian Sports Club. Couldn't get through Caleb Williamson. Williamson, one of the goal scorers. And over the back line it goes there. And you'll see NZI. Are they back out to a bit of a 75. Yeah, under pressure there in the midfield. Again, another win here for NZI. Shea Iswa putting some real pressure on him and her and Marnie working together up there. That's excellent from Iswa. Bicker tries to take it quickly, but he'll come back. In and out, this is really good position from NZI. Williamson cuts it out. Here they go. Can he make something? TJ Hudanui. Just got too big on him there, Hudanui. And they'll go back here, NZI. This is Shahil Lala. It's a good turnover by the Māori team. Here they are. Williamson weaving. Williamson can't get the penalty corner. Thought he'd had one. And just like they've done all day, out they come quickly here, NZI. Free hit coming. It was Kylan Dale here. Prashant, who's looking for the big transfer. 
Trying to link up down here with Armani Punga. Still working his magic there, Shea Aswa. Composure. Great pass. Here is Punga. Out it goes. Bika. They've got some advantage. Where's the shot coming from? Punga. Not coming in the end. Williamson, he's going to have a go from 50. He'll have a go from anywhere, Caleb Williamson. A rare mistake there from Amanjot Singh. Palmer onto the ball now. Another one of the Rua Mata boys, of course, joined by Waka, who's there on the ball. Panapa Hawk. The Hohepa boys. Yeah, a fair few out of the uh, the hockey factory down there in Rutsurua. Here comes Saj, linking up with her and Marnie. Marnie turns on it. Marnie looking, finds Amanjot. Little heavy on the touch. Oh, look at that skill. Arman Jot Singh. And we'll have a look at the replay on that one. Just heads up play, takes it quickly, throws the 3D pass in there. It's a bit of a rough challenge by Norpeta Hohepa. And PC coming. Can they put in another one here, the NZI boys? Oh, that was very nearly. Heron Marnie in a nice little left slide spot there. Armandjot. They got it, they executed it, just went wide of the goal. Now the multi team, well they're starting to run out of time here. Nine and a half minutes. Seems like a long time, but that scoreboard pressure really starts to ramp up inside the last 10. Yeah, and little little errors like that aren't going to help the cause either. And like we mentioned earlier in the, the third quarter, they've got to build up. They can't just replicate this Indian style of, of go at pace when you're down on the clock. That one across the goal. Here it is, Conor Narasi. Very nearly. I think to Kohu Palmer there. Just uh, made sure that one went wide. And nothing coming there. Couple of passes across the back. This Indian side happy to sit in the three quarter. There's the trigger. Now here's the pressure, two up. Yeah, Yash Kushal just couldn't get up high enough on that one. That's better from the Maldi side. That's not, unfortunately. Long ball, oh, touch, Connor Narasi. Can't Shea Iswa, can't pull it in. Into the middle of the field now through Hohepa. Seven and a half to play.
Cindy inside, really composed. There's the turnover. Here's the opportunity. Turai Singham, that's lovely. <laughs> For those watching along at home, this NZISA men's team are must-watch TV. If you don't have plans for the rest of Easter weekend, I would be circling their name on the draw and watching every one of their games if we can. If you're in and around the area, get down here. This NZISA men's team have a lot of go in them. And they're ones to watch this weekend. There again, Turai Singham, reverse tick pass. Iswa, big question. Well saved by Solomon Kaihe. Working. Oh, there he is. They write kids' books about him back in India. That's exceptional. TJ Hudanua, he won't give up. He'll get into everything. Tough kid from here in Tamaki Makoto. With one of the most impressive uh, moulets going around any sport. Uh, weaving the magic there for NZISA. Here comes Amanjot Singh. Great pass. Shot, save. Second shot. <laughs> Connor Narasi. He's done stuff like this before. If you're new to his game, he played for CD at last year's KBT. If anyone could pull it off, it's probably him. Very nearly for NZI. And you can see they're playing with so much confidence at the moment. The way they're pressing, their lines, everything's on the back of the confidence. And Hohepa, he's going to try and work this one away. Great tackle again there. That one was Devon and Bicker. Just unforced errors here from the Maldi side, inviting the Indians back at them. So There's real hard yards at the moment for the Maldi side. Again, just showing their ability to hold position here. This Indian side. Yeah, pretty. they were slow starters, certainly by execution. Uh, in that first half, they had all of the run of the game but couldn't put anything away. And four goals in the third quarter quickly changed that. Now this Maldi side, let's see if they've got a goal or two in them in these final three minutes. Of course, in the men's draw, the other two teams, New Zealand Asian, a new group here, and New Zealand Fiji. We'll see them play a little bit later. And here we go, opportunity for the Māori team. And it goes. And they'll get the penalty corner for it. Good positioning there from Caleb Williamson. The, rest of the, the Indian boys are going to go and have a few questions about it. With, uh, Jacob Camilleri down that end. Just weird on the back of, again, the Hohepa boys linking up. 
This one through to Williamson. And now the opportunity through the penalty corner here. Harrison Cochrane to pull the ball out. They've got two brackets at the top. First brackets, Williamson in. Still in there. And another slam dunk. This one sent away, though, by the Indian defenders. Great in the end. The Great Wall of India answers again. As we close in the last 90 seconds of this first men's match for the tournament. New Zealand Indian Sports in control here. Down this right side. That's a great tackle there, Brayton Lemon. Oh, he throws it straight back. To Milan Patel. Good to say. Uh, you've got to say that the back and forth, the double turnovers, the, the unforced errors for this multi side in the second half, they've really hurt them. Uh, so too has the Indian attack, and oh. Josh Thurai Singham just throwing one out in front of her and Marnie. The Wellington Indian Sports Boys linking up there. And we'll count down the final 15 or so. Trish and Waka trying to go long ball. Let's see if they can make them pay here with 10 on the clock. That one's going to beat them all over the corner. No one's rushing for that. But NZISA have their first win of the tournament, taking down the New Zealand Junior Māori side 4-2 in a game where all the goals came all at once. Uh, it was two minutes before halftime break. The Māori team went up 1-0. And then all in the third quarter, five more goals, four of them to the Indians and one goal to the Māori side has wrapped us up 4-2 in the favour of the New Zealand Indian Sports men's team. And of course, they were the winners of the very first Heritage Hockey Tournament at, uh, at Colmar over in Papatuitui. And it looks like they've come back to uh, get their name back on that trophy once again. Of course, special shout-out and thank you to our, all of our tournament sponsors, One Foundation, MTEL Intelligent Solutions, Keeper Life Insurance and Risk Management, and Go Hockey at gohockey.co.nz. We'll have a look at some of the highlights from the game. This was one of the goals, Shayaswa showing some of his skills in front of the cage. Uh, you'll sense a bit of a theme here, some real success down this right hand side of the field. That one very nearly put away by Durai Singham. The penalty corner, great save, but again they go to this right side. And Amanjot Singh makes no mistake from there, cool as ever. Here he is again, the young midfielder earning a penalty corner. Sargent, who you see pull the ball out here, he was an absolute menace. Every time he turned the ball over, a million miles an hour. That deflection there, very nearly. And then they just kept throwing chances at the goal. Well, just wide of it there in that instance from Turai Singham. Amanjot Singh, we spoke about him at length during that game. Harasi, very nearly. He scored four or five goals in a game down at KBT last year for CD. Uh, goalkeeping showing there it was Rohan Patel who'd come in for the later stages of the game 
And uh, we will go down to our sideline reporter, Harley Cooper. He's got Captain DVD Bicker for New Zealand Indian Sportsmen. Kia ora, my name is Harley Cooper. I'm here with the uh, New Zealand Indians uh, winning captain against the uh, New Zealand Junior Māori team. Um, I'm back again because they couldn't find anybody else to do it, so congratulations. Hey, um, DVD, well done with the, uh, the game, obviously, 4-2, hard fought. You decided to only play the third period. Yeah. So that was quite good. Uh, what was the uh, inspiration for only paying one quarter? Yeah, I'll just make the game interesting, I guess. But no, we, um, credit to the Junior Māori boys. I mean, they came out firing and I think probably, yeah. I mean, I think we had a lot of possession, had a lot of chances, but end of the day they put away their chances. So they probably had the better of the first half. But yeah, good fight from the boys to come back second half and yeah, grind out a good result against a pretty gutsy, tough team. Yeah, and saying that though, you guys have been in camp for the last two days. Obviously you've got Hitu, you've got Jay, two, two big stalwarts with the coaching community. Uh, did they actually give you any inspiration going into this? Like, were they going, okay, the Māori are going to come out, all you have to do is hold for the first, probably half, the first quarter, they'll sort of peter out. Was there, was there a reason of why you guys, even though you had the, a lot of opportunities, you really unleashed your midfield in that third period and you actually had a lot more go for it. Was that actually a ploy that you are uh, putting, putting forward? Nah, I think we obviously wanted to come out firing a bit more but like I said they came out firing and probably winning more of the 50-50 balls and yeah I think we have been in camp for a few days but I mean we're still relatively fresh playing with each other so I think yeah it sort of took a half almost just for us to get going and sort of learn our connections a bit better and yeah I think pretty happy with the second half so I think we're starting to come right but yeah. So tomorrow, who are you going to be playing? The New Zealand Asian, I believe. Cool, and uh, what, what do you work on are you going to take away from this game going into that game, knowing just as much as what you know about us, that with the Asian team, obviously? Yeah, I think we sort of know who they've got. They've got quite a few handy players, but I think the main thing is like not too much to change, but I think it's just sort of making sure we keep going and not sort of getting disheartened if we're not sort of scoring goals, because... I mean, what, 60, 70 minutes of hockey is a lot of time, so if we don't come out in the first quarter, obviously we want to, but if it doesn't, we sort of just got to keep trusting our processes and sort of what we did today, we ended up grinding out a pretty good win in the end after, a, I mean, a bit of a slow start in the first half, but yeah. And in, in saying that though, you've had some guys away at the New Zealand camp last week, uh, Sergeant Springs to mind, but they, they were looking quite fresh today, and, you know, are we going to be expecting more of them? Yeah just getting better and better. This, this is the beginning for them. I mean, it's great to have them there because they bring a bit of leadership to help me out with uh, the old leadership group. So, yeah, no, just expect them to keep getting better. Oh, well, thank you very much and uh, congratulations yeah. on the win. Cheers. So that's our first men's match in the books here. It's the New Zealand Indian sports men taking home the win over the New Zealand Māori junior team 4-2 the final score here in North Harbour of course we'll be back in about 35 minutes with our second women's game for the day and second women's game for the tournament which of course is the new outfit New Zealand Asian uh, hockey taking on the New Zealand Heritage Barbarians and look I've heard some whispers of some team lists I've heard some names floating around um, you're going to want to watch this game. Uh, the likes of ex Blackstick Julia King, who's leading the uh, New Zealand Asian outfit, uh, she'll be out there. Uh, we've got some of the uh, Pacifica ladies that you've seen uh, at past tournaments. They're playing for the New Zealand Heritage Barbarians. The likes of the Vale sisters, uh, Kaya Elliott, she's out there again this weekend. Uh, they're joined by the likes of Ella Layton, who was suited up for NZI in the past. Uh, yeah, this is going to be an exciting, exciting game. Our first look at the New Zealand Asian um, hockey teams for the women. And then, of course, following that will be the men a little bit later at 4 o'clock. But we'll be back. Thanks for joining us uh, for that New Zealand Māori versus New Zealand Indian game. We'll be here at 2 o'clock for New Zealand Asian taking on New Zealand Heritage Barbarians. We'll see you then.
the sun and on the city lights. All this thought around me, let me look, I got it right. Don't you try to hit me, now you live a petty life. All those nights I laid awake, I pray for better life. Now I wake up with a baddie like I said I might. This is better life, you never try, I bet it right. This is better life, you never try, I bet it right. You been stuck this way, you up because you never tried. Want a better life, I had a time, I bet it right. Yeah, I just took a test and yeah, let me write.